Hey guys, all right, today we are going to talk about tips on uh, buying an oud in a foreign country. You're going to uh, learn what your options are nowadays with the coronavirus not being able to travel. If you can't travel to another country to buy an oud, what can you do today? And then um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, ouds you can find on the internet. I'll be looking at them with you. Um, seeing which ones I'm interested in, which ones I'm not interested in, you know, which ones I would stay away from, so you can get my uh, real-time tips. Yesterday we had looked at ebay.com, but today we'll look at Amazon and see what they have to offer. And then I'm going to talk about uh, what's happening at Oud for Guitarists this December with Christmas, uh, what kind of deals we're going to have on Oud lessons this month, and also on uh, buying Ouds themselves. So... Let's have a listen, listen to some oud first, and then we'll get into it. Okay, let's get into it. So first, I want to talk about buying an oud in a foreign country. So I've got some tips for you, of course. And just a moment here. All right. Yeah, so some tips. First of all, um, I recommend when you are looking at ouds in another country, uh, first know how much you are willing to pay. Um, and number two, m make sure you're pretty serious about it. Now, uh, don't waste, you know, shopkeeper's time. If you're not serious, you're just browsing around. You know, don't go and, uh, you know, try all the instruments in the shop unless you get the vibe that they're really friendly and, you know, are willing to help and willing to, you know, help somebody like that. Number three, 
um, be honest with the person, with the shopkeeper that you're uh, that you're with. Be honest about your music background. If you've got a lot of uh, music background, then they're going to they're if they know that they're not going to try to rip you off, or they're going to know that you can tell the difference between a good instrument and a bad instrument. Um, if you're an absolute beginner, then be honest with them about that too. But um, you know they they may still want to uh, try to push an instrument on you that maybe is more than you need at the moment, or maybe push something on you that isn't a very high quality. Um, but that's okay. You're still a beginner. It may be appropriate for your level. But there's some important questions that you can ask um, the vendor or the seller of the instrument at a shop um, to kind of get a better idea. Especially if you're you have no music background, you are not that experienced with uh, holding an instrument, knowing what's good and what's bad. So ask the vendor some of these questions. Number one, how long has the instrument been in the shop? You know, how, how long has it been sitting there? Um, ask them, number two, how many they've sold of these? Are they, you know, the best? What's, ask them what is their best-selling instrument. And, you know, if they're helpful, if, they're, if you get a good vibe from them, they're going to help you out and, and they're going to explain more in detail. Um, then, this is a good one. Ask the shopkeeper or the the person selling the instrument what they recommend. Given your bad, given you know if you're a beginner or if you're an experienced uh, musician, given your background, what would they recommend for you? Um, because and the reason I say this is because people like to be asked their opinion, and uh, th this way um, they'll be more on your side. They'll they'll love to tell you what they think, um, and they'll start to like you more. Um, that way you can kind of win them over. If you have the salesperson on your side, then uh, you're more likely to get a better deal um, later on. Um, and let's say you you know, you know, get to an instrument that the shopkeeper or whatever is saying, you know, this is a good instrument for you. Why don't you go with something like this? This is what I suggest. Okay, that's great. But if you're still not convinced, then ask the shopkeeper, if they can play something for you on that instrument that way you know if the instrument is worth anything then they and if it's in good shape and stuff they might be willing to play something for you on it and then you can decide for yourself whether it sounds good or not um, that these are all good things that you can you know ask uh, the shopkeeper when you're actually there in person and uh, you're looking for an instrument to purchase whether it's an oud or another instrument, uh, whatever Middle Eastern instrument you might find. So yeah, that's what I would recommend you do. Also, in order to get a good bargain, a good deal, um, people who sell things like to sell a number of things. If you're willing to buy, um, you know, a oud case or you know, several items, you might be able to get a better deal that way. Maybe you buy some accessories, okay, maybe buy some strings. Find out, uh, you know, what you can get if you buy multiple items. Uh, see if you can get a deal. Uh, people are always willing to discount um, when you're selling, you know, more than one item. If you're just looking for an oud, you know, no frills, it's harder to negotiate that way if you're not willing to, you know, buy a couple extra things um, yeah so that's what I would recommend for buying an oud in another country before you go to another country and you're looking for tips a good place for ouds anyway is to look on Mike Oud's forum mikeouds.com look on the forum for um, places where good neighborhoods in the locality where you're going to uh, to find good shops um, search around there on Mike Oud's so that you can get a good idea of what shops are good. Uh, that forum has been a, on for a long time uh, and so a lot of people have commented. Um, you know, whether you're going to Egypt or you're going to Turkey, um, find some good tips of some shops there uh, on Mike Oud's. All right. Um, another thing you can do is if you know somebody local, if you have a friend, go with a friend 
to these shops if you're serious about buying. Um, take them with you so that they, they can maybe speak the local language. Uh, maybe they know something about music. It's even better if they're a musician and they have a relationship, you know, with the music community. Then they can tell you whether you know you're go you're seeing a good oud or not or what have you. Um, after a while, if you're not um, if you're not really sure about the instrument, you want to go shop around a little bit. Um, then, but you are still thinking that maybe these are these ouds that this guy is selling uh, is a good idea. Then what you can do is uh, just you know talk to the person, tell them how long you're going to be in town for, uh, so that they start to trust you. Ask them for their business card and uh, you know get there so that you have like telephone number. That's just a nice way I think of. Um, showing the shopkeeper that you're kind of serious. Don't just, you know, walk out and come back later. Um, they'll, remain, they'll remember you that way uh, a bit more, I think. And uh, maybe they'll be more willing to give you a better deal on an instrument after they have some rapport with you and uh, they, you know, they've made friends with you a little bit. So, yeah, so um, that's my tips for... Um, you know, buying an, an oud in another country. Now, of course, with coro the coronavirus, not many people are traveling these days. Um, and uh, so what can you do if you want to buy an oud, want to get into the oud now? What can you do? The best place is to buy an oud online. And uh, I want to give you my recommended um, you know, company and ouds that you should buy if you're you know, are worried about buying an oud online, and you're uh, you have some apprehension about it, then what I recommend the most is um, these ouds here. Let me find the website here. Uh, these ouds, I'm directing you actually to my website. Just one moment. Okay, here's the URL. These ouds are provided by a company called Ethnic Musical. They're a great company making ouds, especially for Arabic tastes, Arabic sound tastes, and good quality. And they're making ouds directly with the manufacturers in Turkey. So they're in Turkey, they're seeing the ouds that are made in the shop, in the factory. And uh, so these ouds, I, 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 uh, I work with the company. I've chosen these ouds. The three ouds that you see here are the ouds that I think are the best deal for beginners. Um, so these are, these are great. You have an option of entry-level Syrian-style oud uh, made out of uh, walnut, ebony pegs. Um, and then you have another slightly uh, more expensive uh, brown walnut Arabic oud. Um, again, uh, you have no plastic parts on these. A lot of uh, Turkish makers make ouds um, out of Turkish, uh, uh, out of um, plastic pegs, plastic pegs, plastic bridge. Um, so, you know, these ouds are made in Turkey, um, but they're made, some of them are made to Arabic tastes and with uh, the research has gone in to build authentic Arabic size instruments and with um, Arabic sound and also no plastic parts so that's really nice a lot of the cheaper ouds that you buy online uh, especially from Turkey some of them are using plastic pegs which work fine um, and but the plastic bridge is what I'm a little bit concerned about uh, instruments that use plastic bridges are really kind of sketchy um, they may work and they may function but if you're paying good money for an instrument then I don't think you should have to deal with a uh, plastic um, bridge. And uh, so, yeah, that's what I recommend. You can check those out on the link there. If you have any questions, always uh, put them in the comments and let me know. And uh, now I want to go through some uh, ouds on Amazon.com with you together to talk about which ones you know I would be interested in or which ones I would stay away from let's talk about the ones that 
I would stay away from because you want to you want to get a good impression when you see an instrument. Uh, what would what would what would I do in this situation? So let's check it out. I'm going to share my screen with you now. All right. Okay, here we go. So I just uh, put in like a random American postal code um, just for the United States and uh, I searched in Oud and then went to musical instruments or uh, yeah and this is what I found okay so amazing be beginners Oud the Turkish butterfly an Arabian Oud with soft carrying case um, it's got some good reviews four out of five uh, three hundred and forty five dollars okay first off I don't really recommend buying an Oud under four hundred dollars let's check this one out and let's check out the reviews too okay this oud looks like uh, other uh, lower cost turkish ouds that you see likely going to be f um, factory built and provided you to you by darbuka planet so this so this is a well-known company, um, or perhaps it's um, it's provided by Darbuka Planet, but Darbuka Planet sells some decent beginner oods. Okay, so here we go. Let's see some reviews. How about that? Okay, it's good to see the product description. Uh, Walnut Maha Oud Bowl. Okay, this got a lot of different... Uh, a lot of different woods, so it would be hard to know what wood, what wood is being used there. Um, soft clay is included. That's great to have. Um, okay, pegs. PVC Turkish Beginners Oud. PVC, I think um, it, that refers to the plastic. Um, so those are plastic pegs. They're okay. They do the job. They fit, but, uh, you know, you may have some, some problems, you know, getting the oud peg in and for it to stick properly that's a that's a risk but they do work fine but if you want to avoid that go with the ouds that i recommend on uh this site here on my site uh with ethnic musical that's what i would recommend if you want to avoid plastic okay uh here we go reviews 18 ratings let's check it out excellent oud for the price that's cool not happy with it Low quality strings and tuners. Strings broke when trying to tune for the first time. Yeah, probably because he didn't have much experience with it. That that shouldn't happen. Um, but yeah, the pegs. Yeah, I can agree with that. Pegs are not the best quality. Very dis disappointed. The instrument came da damaged. Uh, the thing smells rotten. Yeah, it might smell like glue. Uh, so that might be part of it. It might just be the glue. If it sounds smells like mold, then that's a big problem. But looks like uh, some good uh, reviews of this. Um, yeah. But yeah, the low point would be the pegs. That's for sure. Yeah, strings strings that come on the ouds are not always great. So the cool thing about Ethnic Musical, they set this up so that you can that you can play it as soon as you get it. Basically, you tune it up. The pegs are hand fitted, so they're made sure that you can tune it up nice and easy, as easy as is possible with wood pegs. And um, then they put on high quality strings, pyramid strings, the 650 uh, package with 11 strings. These are great for uh, C to C tuning, which I use. So uh, C, C, G, D, A. F or G and then C or D you can tune either one with these strings um, so yeah good strings come on it you don't have to worry about that that's a that's another good thing because you don't want to buy oud strings you know once you know right when you're getting an oud you want you want to be able to get going you know the, uh, that's the biggest learning curve for beginners is tuning the instrument and changing the strings changing the strings is such a headache so I wouldn't um, recommend, you know, a, an oud that doesn't have a good set of strings on it. So watch out for that. All right, let's check out this one. This looks like a flat back oud uh, with that looks to be doubled as an electric oud. Let me open this in a different window. Okay. 
All right, here we go. This one again looks like it's uh, provided by Darbuka Planet. The thing about um, electric uh, ouds, um, electric semi-acoustic electric ouds, is that the bridge configuration is different. So in order to fit a pickup on there, the bri the um, the strings actually um, lay on top of a piece of wood there, uh, which creates uh, contact with the pickup, which picks up the vibrations. Um, so with these cheaper electric ouds, uh, this bridge configuration can cause problems. Even on the on the Godin multi oud, which is over a thousand dollars, I had problems with the bridge configuration because some strings were louder than others, and that's a big pain in the butt. Uh, you don't want that to happen. So that's a risk with cheaper ouds, uh, cheaper electric ouds, but. Um, you know that's just part of the game but usually guitar uh, repair shops can fix that pretty easily um, depending on the configuration so that's one of the weaknesses with um, these semi-acoustic uh, electric ouds but acoustically the oud should be fine you know uh, it's probably going to be okay uh, for the most part the flat back is kind of cool cool you get uh, the added benefit of the um, the easier to hold perhaps uh, the cut out there that's kind of cool but this instrument is not going to sound great let's be honest you know with all the features it has it's meant to be played as a cheap electric oud um, not going to sound good as your first um, ac acoustic oud there okay let's move on let's go to this one amazing iraqi arabic oud the king of baghdad all right let's check it out 480 okay so it's going to be a cheaper cheaper still a cheaper oud okay looks kind of promising looks okay let's see who's providing these uh, ships from the Eastern Bazaar don't know much about it sold by the Eastern Bazaar let's look into this company a bit more they're in California that's okay okay looks like they have some good good reviews that's nice nice to hear Okay, so this is cool. It's made in Turkey. Okay, so this is uh, probably uh, a factory-made oud, made for Arabic uh, market, Arab market, for, so that they, they've designed an uh, Iraqi oud. It's probably not going to sound exactly like an Iraqi oud. It'll probably be like a Iraqi oud with a bit of a Turkish uh, flavor, a Turkish accent to it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's see if this has any reviews. Okay, this is good. It has some information about it. Um, spruce, mahogany neck, fingerboard is walnut. Okay, walnut is pretty good. It's a hard wood, um, not as durable as ebony, of course. Um, the nut is ebony. That's good. Nut is good to be ebony. Um, that's also important okay let's see what else you can see here pegs are ebony that's nice and it looks like the finish is some polyester finish so they've they've actually coated the soundboard perhaps or maybe that's the soundboard doesn't look coated from this uh, from what i can tell but uh, maybe the back is um, coated with varnish or whatever uh, polyester whatever that means yeah, so this is uh, not a bad deal, I guess, but uh, it's definitely not gonna t it's not gonna sound like an Arabic oud, um, and it's impossible. One thing you really want to look for in beginner ouds is you want to look at the pictures closely and get a view of the action. Um, not gonna always be possible, but with ouds from uh, ethnic musical. Uh, these ouds, like the people who, the owner of the company is an oud player. Uh, they know the ouds, they see the ouds, they get the ouds, and they set up the ouds themselves in the factory and make sure that the action is playable before, you know, it's shipped off. And so that's the, one of the greatest things about, about this company is that they're going with your uh, best interests in mind. They're not just trying to sell, you know, instruments um, willy-nilly like that so that's what I like about them uh, let's see some other instruments here let's go down um, let's see what can we find what's interesting all these look like basic uh, you know beginner ouds that you can find uh, online everywhere 
let's look at this one Gauharat El Fan. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this um, type of oud, this, um, this company. Uh, you get a lot of mix. You can see right away that the, that the face, the soundboard, is made out of several types of wood. In most cases, yes, the, the soundboard is going to be made out of several types of wood, but you can really see with the quality here that, um, that you know they're put together with multiple layers and uh, not a lot of care has been taken to make sure that it looks flush um, but yeah that's that's fine for cheaper ouds um, yeah what can you do uh, but uh, this company doesn't have a great reputation it may have an air have an authentic arabic sound but not a not a the most durable oud you can see the pegs are pro are not ebony there again um, ebony pegs are the best wood pegs that you can get and so that's why again these ouds here um, with ethnic musical they they trump they trump that because you know 399 uh, for a beginner oud with ebony pegs that's awesome what uh, how how much better can you find so that's good um, yeah I'm not a big fan of Garharat El Fan um but it's possible that you can find a decent instrument from that company anyway that one's not even available so uh yeah looking at some of these ouds some of them might be a safe buy some of them look like typical uh factory turkish ouds uh let's see what else we can find oh let's take a look at this one ultra pro syrian oud made by ziryab turkish style okay uh, that's yeah they're starting to make Turkish style instruments uh, how's that for a turn of events uh, an Arabic company making a Turkish style oud that's kind of cool um, let's take a look Zeryab is a pretty stand-up company they're making pretty good uh, starter ouds uh, intermediate level ouds um, their pegs are pretty good um, their higher models uh, one thing about the Zeryab Ouds is their lower models, they're made pretty roughly. Um, the one that I have that you see me play all the time here, uh, let's get uh, that back. So this one, like I've mentioned in other videos, um, the nut uh, had some problems with it and uh, it was too high. It was, it was not very playable. So I had to actually shave it down, sand it down and uh, make sure that it was a playable height. And now it's a better it's a better height and now it's comfortable to play um, but you know as a as a oud teacher and for someone who's getting into the oud I don't want you to go through that kind of thing and and that's not what I want for you so that's why um, the cool thing about the ouds that I'm offering here uh, through uh, ethnic musical is that they've gone to the care uh, and uh, they've gone to to care about the nut They've replaced and made sure that bone nuts are used um, and uh, that they're well fitted for the strings and all set up so that you don't have to worry about things like that. Um, and you shouldn't have to as uh, somebody who's getting into the oud. All right, so that's about it for me um, with uh, talking about ouds online. You've seen a couple examples of different ouds here. I'm just going to see if there's any comments, uh, any questions you got here. Uh, all right, let's see. Ebony soundboards crack. I've never, I've never had a, an ebony soundboard crack. They are a drier wood. That is true. Uh, Yeah. Uh, is Ethnic Instruments and Ethnic Musical the same company? No, it's not. Ethnic Musical is a completely different company. Uh, they're based in Turkey, and uh, they're providing instruments uh, from there. Do you know what type of oud George, uh, George Michel used? Uh, no, I don't. I'm assuming it's an Egyptian oud, though. Um, I don't know too much about it. All right, USA for the win. Welcome back. All right.
right, let's see here. Okay, yeah, so um, what I want to mention now is that uh, at Oof for Guitarist this December, we're planning on doing a whole bunch of uh, cool uh, deals for you for this December. Um, first of all, we're going to be packaging these ouds that uh, I showed you. Here, I'll show them to you again. Uh, these ouds that I've showed you, we're going to be packaging them with oud lessons. Um, oud lessons, uh, for now, I'm thinking of doing a package of um, oud lessons with a purchase of an oud, um, like with the foundation program. So it takes you right from uh, A to Z, uh, all the learning all the basics of the oud. So you'll so you'll probably pay like um, a little bit more than the price of the oud, and you'll get uh, an oud for guitarists uh, learning program, so you can learn oud as soon as you get your your instrument. Um, so we'll, so you'll be able to save money on the. I'll give a little discount on the oud lessons that way. So you know like foundation program right now is from uh, foundation one, two, three, four, four levels is one ninety nine. So I'm planning on giving a discount if you buy an oud with that um, so that you know people who are starting getting uh, in line with the oud and want to learn and are excited to learn can order a decent oud right from the get-go with uh, hopefully no problems, you know, no, um, no issues with uh, tuning, smooth tuning. Um, the right strings on the instrument, um, the right instrument for your needs at a decent price, and you can get started learning with uh, the Oud Foundation program. Um, aside from that, we'll also be doing, uh, for those of you who are looking to just learn Oud and study Oud in more detail, I'm also going to be doing um, some package deals on uh, Oud lessons, so like the Oud Foundation program, plus a course that deals with uh, Oud ornaments, advanced ornaments, and also my new course, uh, Egyptian Music Volume 1. I'm going to package these all together, for, and you're going to get a good deal on all these, um, all these Oud lessons. That'll give you a good amount of content to work on as a beginner, and you can learn advanced stuff. And for those of you who are more intermediate Oud players, um, kind of still working on uh, learning how to improvise and stuff, I'm going to create a package where you learn all about Makams and, and improvising. So uh, it's going to be an improvisation training package where you can get the Makam Mastery Program, um, which feature, it goes in depth, uh, analyzing different Makams, learning about modulations, how the building blocks of Makams go together, um, and then step-by-step uh, taksim -step program, which uh, goes step-by-step -step through uh, notated taksim from a very uh, low-level taksim to a more advanced level taksim and teaches you licks and riffs, uh, cool uh, licks that uh, people like Simon Shaheen use in their taksim. So the, I'm going to be putting some packages together uh, just for December, just for the Christmas holidays, um, so I wanted to let you know about that in case you're interested. More information about that will be coming. So definitely make sure you sign up for the for the uh, Ud for Guitarist newsletter. And the way that you can uh, get on the newsletter is by signing up here. I'm going to bring the link up one moment. Just bear with me here. Okay, you can sign up at this link. This link uh, goes directly to the to the uh, pop up that you can sign up and put your email address in there. Get on the newsletter list if you're not already on there. All right, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Let's see if there's any um, questions here. Are Syrian ouds harder to play than other ouds? Nope. Yeah, thanks. All right. <laughs> yes, uh, I do have Instagram. Uh, I'll get you that Instagram link right now. One moment. Yeah, you can follow me on Instagram. 
and see what I do in my day-to-day -day life from time to time. Some oud stuff. Don't pow I don't post a lot on there, but they're on. Okay, one moment. Okay, here it comes. All right, yeah, I'd love to hear your, your oud playing. Okay, there you go. That's my Instagram there. If you want to follow me there. Notice that a lot of older oud players copy each, each other in small ways. Totally, yeah. See, when you learn how to improvise on, on the oud, you're, al you're always starting from uh, listening to your teacher, first of all, your, your master. Your, uh, you're always going to be copying, emulating. And then you create and you elaborate on top of that, you know. Um, and uh, it's all material. It's all like uh, sharing vocabulary. So oud masters, oud players, oud professionals, they're all sharing material, you know. And, and stuff you hear, you can't get it out of your mind. It's not, it's not um, you can call it copying. It's not plagiarism. It's just the, that's how, that's a part of being human and that's how we share musical vocabulary you know the in language the same thing happens you pick up a, a slang word here you start using it yourself it becomes part of your language it's the same with a oud lick or oud riff you hear from a master you learn how to play it you pick it up you turn it into your own vocabulary and uh, it becomes something that you're natural playing so yeah that's about it for me i've got to get going thanks for joining me guys and uh yeah, hit me up on Instagram if you're interested. Again, sign up for the newsletter uh, so that you can get on the mailing list. I'll be telling you more about uh, more things that you can learn. And uh, yeah, have a good one. See ya.